Hi everyone, Path here, and in this video I'd like to take a look at some optics. Specifically, we'll be taking a look at real and virtual images. So if you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. When I first started studying optics, I remember finding the concept of real and virtual images quite complicated to get my head round. What did these two terms actually mean and why did we have to differentiate between the two? Well, in order to understand these terms, we will be considering what is known as a convex lens. Now, if you're already familiar with how we treat convex lenses in the study of optics and you just want to get to the real and virtual images part, then feel free to skip the first section of this video. So let's begin by considering a convex lens. Now, this is the kind of lens that is often found in a magnifying glass. And we will be looking at this lens from the side so we can think about how light moves from one side to the other through the lens. But essentially we can see that it's just a piece of glass or clear plastic shaped like this, thicker in the middle and thinner towards the edges. Now in this video, we will be assuming that this convex lens is an ideal lens, which means that it will behave in slightly simplified ways compared to how a real lens would behave. But these simplifications are close enough to the behavior of a real lens yet will make our understanding of this scenario much, much simpler. But the first thing we'll talk about is the focal point of the lens. This is a very special imaginary point along the optical axis of the lens, and it's a property of the lens. So a different convex lens would have a different focal point. And technically the focal point exists on both sides of this convex lens. So we've got a focal point on the left and a focal point on the right. The reason we bring up the focal point of the lens is because any ray of light passing through the focal point and then passing through the lens will be refracted or bent by the lens in such a way that it subsequently moves parallel to the lens's optical axis. Similarly, any ray of light entering the lens already moving parallel to the optical axis will be refracted by the lens in such a way that it passes through the focal point on the other side. Next, we can consider any ray of light passing through the absolute center of the lens, whether it's moving along the optical axis or in any other direction we will assume that any ray of light passing through the absolute center of the lens will continue on in the same direction. Now, this is one of those simplifications we discussed earlier. An ideal lens behaves like this, but a real lens behaves very slightly differently. But this simplification is very close to the truth and it makes our life a lot simpler, so we'll stick with it. Now, with these three rules that we've discussed, we will be able to think about how the lens produces an image for a particular object placed on one side of the lens. And of course, we'll be thinking about both real and virtual images. Now, if you've studied optics before, then you're probably familiar with the infamous arrow that we use as the object when placed in front of a lens or a mirror. We use this object to work out how the lens or mirror will produce an image of the object. In reality, the object could be anything. It could be your hand, or it could be a pencil, or it could be a small toy puppy. But we use an arrow because it's supposedly less complicated. However, in some cases, this can make things more tricky to understand. The reason is because we use arrows to also represent the rays of light moving from one side of the lens to the other. So for this video, anything that is colored purple will be representing an actual physical object placed in front of this lens. And any of the arrows colored in red will be representing rays of light. As we'll be seeing shortly, we'll also use the color yellow to represent any images produced by the lens. Now, what's happening in this scenario that we've drawn out? is that there's probably some sort of light source, maybe a lamp, somewhere in the room, and this lamp is emitting light, which bounces off our object. By the way, we could think of an object that emits its own light, that's cool too, but for this video, let's just imagine that the object is reflecting the light. And this light, of course, bounces off in all directions. So these rays of light are specifically the ones bouncing off the tip of the object arrow. But we will only be considering a couple of these rays of light, because we only need to consider a couple of these rays of light. Let's imagine, first of all, that we have an observer on this side of the lens. Here is their eye. The question to answer here is, what will this observer be seeing? Well, the answer is they'll be seeing the rays of light coming from the lens. So what do those look like? If we consider these two rays of light coming from the tip of our object arrow, then the first one is moving parallel to the optical axis. Therefore, when it passes through the lens, it will be refracted so that it's passing through the focal point. The second ray of light is the one that is passing directly through the center of the lens, which we've said will continue on in the same direction. And at this point, we see that these two rays of light will converge or meet at this point here. It's worth mentioning that if we considered other rays of light coming from the tip of the arrow and moving through our lens, then they would also converge at this point. It's just that we don't have nice simple rules to follow in order to work out the direction of the rays of light. Anyway, so what we found is that the image of the tip of the object arrow 
forms where these rays of light converge. If our observer placed their eye at this position, they would see in clear, sharp focus an image of the tip of the arrow. This is known as a real image because it is formed by the actual convergence of light rays. So light rays are actually meeting at a point and resulting in a focused image. And we can do the same sort of analysis for the rest of the points along our object arrow. For example, this point will have an image produced at this point, and so the whole object will have an image that looks something like this. It's inverted or upside down, and it's a real image once again because it's formed by the convergence or meeting of light rays. If we were to put a screen here, we'd actually see a picture of our object, an image of our object forming on that screen. Now this is of course where my color scheme goes a bit weird because we technically see a purple image, assuming the lens is not doing anything to the colors of the image, but we're using yellow to represent the image because we want to differentiate it from the actual object itself. So basically our observer's eye or a screen placed at this position would be seeing an upside down image of our object. I think this is pretty logical so far. So let's now move into the realm of virtual images. It turns out that convex lenses can create virtual images as well as real ones. If we now move our object so that it's placed closer to the lens than its focal point, then this is what will happen. We once again consider two rays of light coming from the tip of our object. The first one is moving parallel to the optical axis, and so it will be refracted by the lens so that it passes through the focal point on the other side. The second is the one passing straight through the center of the lens, which will continue on in the same direction. Now we can see that these two rays of light are getting further away from each other. So how will they converge in order to form an image at all? The answer is that they won't, but they do form an image. To work out what this image looks like, we need to do something slightly unusual here. We need to trace back these two rays of light until we arrive at the point where these two projections, these two dotted lines meet each other. And we then say that a virtual image of the tip of the arrow, which is an actual object, is formed at this point in space. If we do the same thing for the rays of light coming from other parts of our object, then we see that the virtual image that's formed looks like this. But what does this actually mean? And why do we do this weird backwards tracing thing with our rays of light? As it so happens, our brains do exactly what we've just described. When diverging rays of light enter our eyes, our brain interprets them as if coming from a source. So what our observer actually sees when looking through the lens is the image and not the object. This is why a magnifying glass works in the first place. If we place an object closer to it than its focal point and we look through the magnifying glass, we don't actually see the object. We see the image of the object, which in this case is bigger than the object itself. And so if you want to know the answer to the question, what's the point of studying virtual images, then you're better off asking a biologist and not a physicist. Interestingly for a virtual image, there is nowhere that we can place a screen such that an image will actually form on the screen because with a real image, this was formed by the actual convergence of light rays. But that's not the case for a virtual image. For a virtual image, we're just imagining the rays of light coming from a source. Anyway, so that is why in our study of optics, we need to learn about both real images and virtual images. Now, obviously there's a lot more to this topic than what we've discussed here. But when I first started studying optics, I found this bit difficult to get my head around. But with all of that being said, I am going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Hit that bell button if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload and please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.